friends welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be part two of the top remote jobs in cybersecurity so if you haven't already here is part one of the remote cybersecurity job series and i can link that video below this video is pretty self-explanatory i'll be going over a list of six remote jobs in cybersecurity that are highly paid and highly sought after as a continuation of that first video and just as some basic context a lot of jobs in cybersecurity have moved to hiring for remote roles just because a lot of professionals in cybersecurity prefer to work remotely and I am one of those people. I currently work remotely as a security analyst. So the first role we're going to discuss on this list is a cybersecurity consultant. And on Glassdoor, a security consultant makes on average about $94,000 per year. So if any of you guys are familiar with other types of consulting roles like management consulting, IT consulting, consulting firms like Accenture, consulting is exactly what it sounds like. You typically are going to work for a consulting agency and from there your clients or your company's clients are going to be other companies that need your services or need your expertise or advice on creating some kind of security program, rolling out new security initiatives, since we're talking specifically about cybersecurity, implementing different security solutions or controls, or even outsourcing things like blue team and red team. For example, assessing your company's applications for security vulnerabilities, or even working as part of a company's SOC. So consulting, I think, is one of the best ways to get very well-rounded in your career. This was something that one of my red team mentors in my first job actually recommended to me that if I wanted to continue down and eventually get on to a red team, then one of the best ways to do that is through consulting agencies because their main money maker is going to be their talent and they want their talent to have the best skills out there and they are much more likely to invest in your technical and professional development in terms of sharpening your skill set compared to another company where the cybersecurity team may be more of a preventative measure and there's not going to be a huge huge investment compared to consulting agencies to help you really sharpen your skills in for example red teaming or blue teaming but of course there are consulting agencies that have less technical roles that are more so for implementing different security controls for example if there's a specific software or a specific solution that your company is looking to use but it requires very in-depth cybersecurity knowledge or knowledge about that tool specifically and they don't want to train people to take on and learn that information because there's so many other things that they want their cybersecurity teams to work on then they may hire out a consulting agency with professionals who already know the ins and outs of that solution or of that software and they're the ones who will manage it report on it use it etc basically as a third party or a vendor but they are technically working for your company even while they're working for another consulting company so your main job as a cybersecurity consultant is to bring your expertise to the clients and customers that you're helping because typically if they're working with a consulting agency that means that you have knowledge that they do not currently have and they are either hiring you out to do those functions or they're hiring you out to train their people to do those functions. So typically for cybersecurity consultants, you're going to end up eventually being a SME or a subject matter expert in whatever field that you're going into. Some consulting firms are specifically for certain things like web application pen testing or for specific knowledge-based cybersecurity consulting, or they can be very broad and touch a number of different things. So it's all up to you depending on what you want to do. Consulting is a great role to go into, especially if you're someone who's interested in cybersecurity, but you're also interested in the business side and talking to people and giving advice and strategy. So security consulting roles are definitely for a specific type of cybersecurity professional. And I would definitely say that good communication skills and good people skills are probably some of the top soft skills needed for the role. But again, it is a very highly sought after and highly paid role in cybersecurity. All right, next role on this list is a security sales engineer. So on Glassdoor, a security sales engineer makes about $91,000 per year on average in the US. So before you skip this section, because I mentioned this was a sales role, I actually feel like sales is one of the most underlooked roles out there, especially in tech, considering that many software companies, small, medium, and large, require sales teams to be able to sell their products and get customers even if they're B2B or B2C. Now, of course, I'm talking specifically about companies that are B2B or business to business. So you're likely going to be selling your company software to another company out there who is looking to use your services. And this is a side of cybersecurity that I had never seen in my previous company, but of course I was working for a financial services company. So our sales team was really just our financial advisors and the finance side. So I did not really touch much of that. But after working in my current company, I've come to realize how important that sales is to a company, especially for a growing company. And oftentimes when you are going into different markets, you're going to have customers that are big companies and they're going to worry about the security of your software, of your hardware, of whatever services that you're trying to sell them. Even if they really, really want your product or service, 
you're not just going to blindly sign a contract and trust that you have your security program under control. And this is where security sales engineers come in. So as part of the sales program, there typically is going to be some technical person, aka a security sales engineer, who is going to be helping to answer different questions that the customer has. For example, things like encryption, disaster recovery, availability, logging, security events, everything that has to do with the realm of security. A typical sales representative won't know the details or the technical details or be able to explain it and talk to that customer's technical team the same way that a technical person would. And that's why security sales engineers have become a super integral role in any company that is trying to market and sell their products. So your job is basically going to be answering any questions from the customer. There may be questionnaires or assessments that you may have to answer based on your company's security program for the product that you're selling. You may have to join different meetings and calls to help facilitate the sale and answer any questions from the customer side. So essentially your job is to know everything about your product ins and outs, specifically from a security perspective. And then with that knowledge, you're going to help answer any questions from the security team or the development team of any potential customers or prospective customers that you talk to, as well as working with the sales team on any initial assessments or questions regarding security for your product. So a security sales engineering role is a technical role where you'll likely need in-depth knowledge about the product, but it's also on the people side where you're able to talk directly with the customers or the stakeholders you're likely going to be joining calls people are relying on your input and your expertise about the product and it can definitely be a very fulfilling role many sales roles may also have some kind of profit sharing model so you may get a percentage of the sales that you make but again that'll be all up to the company that you're in but this is definitely a great role for someone who has that general cybersecurity knowledge but maybe they don't want to be heads down working on cybersecurity things and they still want to be able to talk to customers or talk to different stakeholders then a security sales engineering role might be perfect for you all right, so since we talked about two cybersecurity roles that are kind of very close to the business side of things, the third one is one that I didn't add in my first video because I thought it was very obvious, but is going to be for a web pen tester. So the average salary on Glassdoor for a penetration tester is $102,000 per year on average. So I'm not going to go too in-depth into what a web pen tester is because I assume many of you guys know, and I do have a video going more in-depth if you guys want to check it out down below. But essentially, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're trying to find the vulnerabilities or the exploit bugs in an application or whatever you're trying to pen test and basically find those before an, an actual bad actor finds them and it can take advantage of them. So this is going to include vulnerabilities from the OWASP top 10 as well as zero day vulnerabilities that come out basically every day. A lot of your job is keeping up with cybersecurity trends, any potential exploits that hackers are taking advantage of, anything that is hot in the news in the cybersecurity field. Hard skills are definitely very important for pen testers and you'll probably have to pick up a good amount of different tools. For example, tools like Burp Suite and Map. I can add a list of the most popular tools used for red teaming or offensive security, which all really ties back to pen testing. There's definitely differences between red team and pen testing, but just at a basic level, pen tests are typically for a shorter amount of time. For example, in my previous company, pen tests typically took about a week. And then at the end of the week, any exploits or vulnerabilities that you find, you document them into a report and then you give that report back to the stakeholders or the development team and then have them make the fix for those vulnerabilities. There may be some back and forth between whether or not they want to fix them, especially if they are P4s or P5s, ones that are lower risk or lower severity. And then once the approved fixes are submitted, then it'll typically get passed back to you to be able to verify and check that the fix is implemented and the application is no longer vulnerable to the exploit that you found. And the next role on this list is a DevOps engineer. So on Glassdoor, the average salary for a DevOps engineer is $104,000 per year in the US. DevOps engineers are one of the most important roles in any organization because they really are kind of like the glue that ties the whole cycle together. DevOps engineers typically don't code directly, but they may have some scripting. They typically work with developers on pushing code into production, working on code releases, maybe automating certain things that are pain points in the development lifecycle, building, testing, and maintaining the tools and infrastructure that allow for the development and release of software in your company. But I do think a lot of it does tie back to availability, where if a developer cannot push code to production because there's something wrong with the SDLC lifecycle, or basically there isn't a DevOps team there to help them push the code, and then that is going to be a huge internal availability issue. There are many DevOps engineering roles that are related to security or secure code, as well as testing, which both things I believe go back to cybersecurity. And being in DevOps, you really see the whole cycle from start to end, or it's just CICD and it is continuous. And it really does teach you a lot if you're someone who doesn't want to be a software developer but 
still want to be close to the code or the deployment of code and releases and you're also kind of working behind the scenes with developers and stakeholders to help make the code release process as smooth as possible you definitely have to be a very process oriented person to enjoy being a devops engineer but a lot of people do go into devops because they prefer a role where they're still close to the code but they don't have to be coding full stack specifically but maybe sometimes they're scripting or sometimes they're working with stakeholders or they're more so on the infrastructure side so it really depends on what you're most interested in when you're getting into technology but there's definitely a big component of devops that ties back to cybersecurity. And you're likely going to be also working with the cybersecurity team on certain initiatives as well. All right, next role on this list is a network security engineer. The average salary for a network security engineer in the US is about $97,000 per year on Glassdoor. So this role is also going to be a little bit self-explanatory. The main job of a network security engineer is to plan, design, optimize, implement, and troubleshoot the network security system to improve the efficiency of an organization. Your main job is to protect the network from different threats and bugs that could attack the system and also making sure that networking systems are resilient enough that they can bounce back or withstand different types of attacks, whether they be from external attackers or even just from natural disasters. You're likely going to be working as part of a larger IT team and in your day-to-day, -day, you'll be planning and implementing different security measures, talking to different stakeholders, and your main priority is to protect the network from different types of security attacks, hackers, intrusions, and anything else that may be an anomaly. As someone who has never considered networking as their forte, I do think it is one of the most important jobs in cybersecurity security, considering that everyone in your company has to connect to a network to be able to log in and access their work things. You may also be responsible for the firewalls, the VPNs, any installations and setup that have to do with anything related to the networking side, routers, switches, extenders, how one data center talks to another data center, or servers and hardware components exist in your network architecture, whether a load balancer is going to be inside your DMZ or outside your DMZ. All this ties back to having good knowledge about networking and a good network security engineer is going to be a very, very important aspect of setting up and maintaining your, your company's internal network. And the last role on this list is a compliance analyst. So the average salary for a compliance analyst in the US from Glassdoor is about $84,000 per year. So I know compliance and auditing and governance is definitely not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone is going to jump at the thought of becoming a compliance analyst. But again, it is also a very important role in cybersecurity, especially for smaller companies or medium-sized companies who are trying to meet certain levels of compliance. Maybe they're trying to get a certification. Maybe they're trying to get their SOC 2. There's so many different reasons to need a compliance analyst. So as a compliance analyst, your job is to ensure that your company's operations and procedures meet different government and or industry compliance standards. Your job may also be to research different regulations and policies, communicate those requirements and share them with your business stakeholders to be able to then update your policies and procedures as well as to apply and complete compliance certifications on behalf of your company. And personally, as someone who has been through the process of an internal audit, it is a lot of work. There's no way that you can do it yourself without a compliance team or a compliance analyst who is helping guide you through it. They're typically the ones who are going to advise you and tell you what evidence may be needed, what documents or policies or things that the auditors might be looking for. And they're also going to be the ones to consolidate all this information to present to any auditors for any certifications or compliance things that your company is looking for. And again, not all of this may sound super important to you guys, but it really is when it comes down to having a company sell its products to other customers, like we mentioned for a security sales engineering role. Most companies out there aren't just gonna take your word for it that your security program is secure and that they can trust you with all their information, all their confidential data. So for actual companies out there, they're going to want to apply for different certifications, different industry standards that they can proudly display on their website to show to customers or potential customers that, hey, we have these certifications and we follow these industry standards and that is why you should become our customer. And without a good compliance team or someone who is working on it, getting those actual certifications, it's going to be really hard to actually get the customers that you want to get. So of course not every role in cybersecurity is going to be everyone's cup of tea, which is completely understandable, but there's definitely a need for all of these roles. And if you're someone who's interested in cybersecurity, but, but maybe don't want to be on the technical side, going into compliance or governance or even IT or security auditing is, is still just as good experience in cybersecurity as any other technical role. So definitely something I want to put out there. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any others that you would like to add to this list. I'm sure there are many, many more. 
cybersecurity roles that are hired for remote jobs. These are just a few that have really stood out to me. And don't forget to watch the part one of this video for remote jobs in cybersecurity, which is linked in the description below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And I've been posting shorts on Fridays for a while now. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but so far that has been a lot of fun. Also be sure to check out my career resources linked in the description below, as well as our Discord channel. I hope to see you there, and also I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye!